Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Praise you. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, as once more and again, a few of your children have gathered themselves together in this house. Yes. God, we pray that the word that come forth today, God, will be an encouragement, uplifting. God, that it would cut going in and heal coming out. Thank you, Lord. We thank you now, God, as we prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive your word today. Move each and every one of us out of the way that we see and hear none of ourselves but all of you. Yes. We bless you continuously and we thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for a day that we've never seen before yes. and a day that we'll never see again. Amen. We thank you for yesterday and we thank you for tomorrow. Yes. But God, we pray that we live today as if today is our last. Yes. In Jesus' name. Let us say amen, amen, <clears throat> amen again, amen. and amen one more time. Amen. amen. If you would turn with me quickly to the book of Philemon, the book of Philemon, and we would start at verse three. When you have it, say amen, the book of Philemon. Verse 3. I heard page is still turning. Please don't tell nobody. Amen. Pray for true heart. Please pray Amen. for true heart. Fill them on. Third chapter that reads as so. Grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Yes. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and towards all saints. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Last verse, for, you, for we have great joy and constellation in thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. May the Lord enter us into the reading of his word and may it sink deep down within our hearts Subject for this morning's title, subject, lesson. Mm -hmm. Give the gift of encouragement. Amen. Give the gift of encouragement. You may be seated. <clears throat> First, we'll deal with our author. Our author is Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul wrote this letter for more than two years doing this his third missionary journey, Paul ministered in Asia Manor among the people of Ephesians mm -hmm. and the people of Ephesus. This was a successful period for the apostle to the Gentiles who saw many converts among both residents of Ephesus and the visiting to the city. One of the visitor converts under Paul's teacher was a man named Philemon, a slave owner from the nearby city of Colossus. I, Paul, have written it with my own hands. I will repay it. A bite I do not say to thee how thou owe unto me even thy own self besides. Mm -hmm. In the Bible book that bears Philemon's name, Paul addressed his beloved brother as a, fa uh, as a fellow worker, Amen. a title given to those who serve 
for a time along Paul. I'm going to read that one more time. In the Bible book that bears Philemon's name, Paul addressed him as a beloved brother, yes. as a fellow worker, a title given to those who served for a time alongside Paul. Amen. The gospel writer Paul spoke about Mark and Luke also receiving this title in his letter. Philemon 1, 1 and 24 says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our beloved, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Paul speaks of the things that he had went through with Philemon. This, 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 this text today is about a man named Philemon yes. and his relationship with Paul. Amen. Isn't it crazy how we're in the church and we see each other and don't have no type of relationship with one another? Amen. These, these, these two, Paul was out doing the work of the Lord. He was on his third missionary journey. Yes. Philemon loved Paul and he supported the work that Paul had been called to do. Amen. Clearly, a kinship existed between Paul and Philemon, mm -hmm. one that would serve a significant purpose and light of the circumstances that brought about this letter. Yes. Let's look at the nutshell of this text. The letter of Philemon reminds us that God's revelation to humanity is personal. In more formal biblical works, such as the gospel or the epistle of, to the Romans, even Paul's letter to churches at Philipp Philippi it might be easier to get the impression that God does not care. I have time for our trials and tribulations in our single households. Philemon stands as one piece of strong evidence to the contrary, revealing that doctrines such as love of God, forgiveness in Christ, yes. are the inheritance of humanities have real and potential impact in everyday life. Amen. The book of Philemon illustrates the principles like these can and should profoundly affect the lives of the believers. Amen. Let us look now into our introduction. Yes. God is the great giver. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes through him. Amen. If we return to the book of James, the first chapter, 17 verse, this is what you will find. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God so love is needed and sinful world that have given his son Jesus Christ for us. Jesus came into this world as the servant of God and as a giver of the gift from God. Jesus taught his disciples to be unselfish servants. Hope I'm talking to somebody today. Who would define their purpose for being in terms of giving? Yeah. To, to his apostle, he said, you receive without pay. Give mm -hmm. without pay. Yeah. Go to Matthew through the eighth chapter to the, to the tenth chapter, the eighth verse. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Yeah. Raise the dead. Cast out devils freely. Yeah. 
ye have received freely give. Jesus believed that all persons was much more blessed to give than it was for them to receive. One time he said it is more blessed is more best to be to be to give than it is to receive. Each of us has a duty and a responsibility to each other that we would give than to always look to receive from others. God has created us to be givers. When God saved us, he changed our mindset from being takers to be givers. It was God himself who says that we're supposed to be a lender and not a borrower. I'm going to preach in a minute. God is trying to teach in this lesson that once we become saved, we become joint heirs of Christ. And once we become joint heirs of Christ, then we are his children. And our father own a cattle on a thousand years. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwell belong to him. Why then should we be in need when our father has all that we need? The joy is exceeding, however, by joy of Given. Nevertheless, many of us feel as Peter did in the presence of great need when he said, I have no silver and gold, yes. but I give you what I have. Yes. Go to the book of Acts, third chapter, six verse. Then Peter said, silver and gold yes. have I none, but such as I have, yes. I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes. How many of us who are children of the most high God, do we spend our lives living this type of response to people? Do we, do we focus on our money or our giving or what we have or what we don't have? God don't want us to walk around as, as, as a child in need. God want us to be, to, he want us to be able to tell people that, that silver and gold we may not have. But God want us to understand what we do possess is greater than money could ever be. Many gifts can be given that cannot be purchased with money. I got it up here. Many gifts can be given that cannot be purchased with money. Somebody may ask today, Pastor, what are you talking about? Because some of us are so caught up that money will fix everything. But I want you to understand this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. And so the world can't take it away. And you, you can't purchase joy because uh, joy can't be purchased. Uh, 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 I thank God that he gave me a sound mind he said, the peace that I give you, peace, peace, this, this peace, that, this peace of love, this, this peace of joy, God will give us peace in the midst of our storms. You can make all the money you want to make in this world, but peace of mind. Is something that money cannot buy. Amen. God is letting us know as Christians that I've given y'all greater things that you can. Some people will spend Sunday and run and work chasing that dollar, trying to get that money. Amen. They run after this money and then they still ain't happy. Amen. Come to understand that the joy that God is saying that I want to give to you, money cannot buy. Amen. Some of us now that are married in our homes, our homes are a wreck. Homes flipped upside down because we're trying to buy folk, yeah. trying to buy gifts and loved ones and buying candy and flowers, perfume, cologne, and all these things, buying people cars and houses and all this. And at the end of the day, within about a week or two, we're still right back Amen. from where we started. In our text, Paul commanded Philemon because Philemon was a great encourager of those about around about him. Amen. He was a beloved fellow worker. And in his house is where the meeting place for the group of believers. Yes. Philemon, Phil, 
Philemon turned his house into a place where the Christians could meet. Amen. They would go and gather, and when Paul would go on journeys, Philemon would raise money in his home and send the money to Paul yeah. to encourage him. I wish I had some help in here today. I said to somebody, I wish I had a heart like Philemon. Amen. Philemon would, would, would know that Paul was out doing the work of the Lord. Philemon knew that Paul did not possess a lot of money. Philemon knew in those days then that while you were out doing the work of the Lord, watch somebody gonna help me a minute, you can't do the work of the Lord and work a job at the same time. Amen. Paul could not travel and still keep a job. Paul could not travel and do God's work but yet stay back and work in the fields and get paid. Paul had given all he had to do the work of the Lord. But in every pastor's life, you need a Philemon. You need somebody who will say, while you are out doing the work, I'm going to stay here to raise the money that I may send to you that you can do what God I got to help in here today, but I'm about to feel my help coming. Because there's so many times in our life we got a lot of folk that just sit and won't, but won't give. Uh, won't help in the church. Won't do anything to help raise the pastor arms to push him out, to encourage him, to say, Pastor, we got you. We got your back. We behind you 100%. Philemon realized that in everything that God does, he has some back. Yes. Oh. People in the background, Philemon didn't look to get glory, but Philemon always wrote Paul. He encouraged Paul. Philemon, what we would look at in these was a misfit. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He was not highly. I thank God for Philemon. Yes. Because in these days of time, everybody want to be the pastor. Oh, my God. Everybody. Some people won't even serve in the church if they don't have titles and positions. Amen. Philemon realized, I don't want none of that. Amen. Philemon said that for the love of God, all I want to do is serve in the kingdom. Amen. He was the kind of man who provoked an attitude of gratitude yes. in the heart of Paul yes. when he prayed to the Father. Philemon prayed for Paul yes. while he was out doing his work. Amen. I wish I had some help helping here today. Amen. I wonder during the week how many of y'all pray for your pastor? Yes. How many of y'all lay before God that God will continue to keep his hand on pastor that he will continue to strengthen your pastor because how many of y'all know that God called your pastor Amen. Amen. called him out of darkness into the marvelous light and when he called him he saw you yes. fill him on the fourth chapter says I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers yes. oh. this is Paul writing to Philemon, thanking him by saying, I thank my God, yes. making mention of thee always in my prayers. Yes. Paul was letting Philemon know that, like some of us do, he was letting him know, I want to thank God for you. Yes. Similar to what I did in Sister June. Yes. Every now and then, you have to encourage people, and every now and then, pastors need to be encouraged. Amen. Philemon was genuinely concerned of those about him. Yes. How many people we have in the household of faith? All these folk come here every Sunday, some light, some dark. Amen. Thank you. Different colors, yes. different clothes, different outfits. But on that day, God does not concern himself about how we dress to come to church. Amen. He don't concern himself how you, how you looked. Uh, was you a fair to look upon? Amen. What God going to remember is what was deep down inside of you. Amen. Did you love your brothers? Did you help the pastor in the work in the kingdom? Amen. Philemon was that type of person. He had a great faith in God. Yeah, yeah. And somebody gonna miss that right there. In order for you to help the pastor do the work of the Lord, you yourself gotta have faith. You can't always be a member. Every Sunday you come to church, Pastor, my faith is weak. I need you to pray for me. You gotta understand that every now and then, Pastor gotta pray for somebody else besides you. Pastor can't hear your cry all the time. Pastor can't always come to church and see you weeping and crying and moaning. Every now and then, Pastor needs you to stand up with a backbone looking straight 
straight, telling the devil in his face and every imp that guess what? Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Pastor needs some people that can encourage, people that can uplift, some people that can say, I'm going to run on Amen. to see Amen. what the end going to be. Amen. He had a great faith in God, a great faith in himself. Yeah. Somebody got to get this. Philemon, right. Philemon had a great faith in God, yeah. but he also had a great faith in himself, yeah. a great confidence in himself yeah. and in others that serve to bless them and to lift them up. How many people, think about what God is saying today in the household of God. Yeah. If you really want to help your pastor and help God in the church, God needs some folk in the church yeah. to encourage folk in the church. Yeah. You ought to be able to come to church if it's nothing more than a smile or just wave your hands and say thank you Jesus. Yeah. Just something. Yeah. To let people know that you are a born again Christian. Look at Philemon 5 and 6. And listen to what it says here. It says, Philemon 2nd chapter verse 5 and 6. Hearing of these love, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and towards all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectually by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Some people, let's keep it 100, that's in the church, all people want is God to just do, 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 do. But in Philip, in Philemon, look at what it said. Philemon had faith in God. Yes. He had faith in, he had built the faith in himself. Yes. See, God wants us to be not always walking around, uh, 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 always want God to do it all the time. Amen. God need you sometime to stand up in yourself and do it for yourself. You can take your own hand and lay it on your own self. Yes. You can take you can take he said life and death is in the power of your tongue. Sometimes you ought to be able to speak to your own self. Yes. Uh, you ought to be able to tell yourself I am yes. fearfully and wonderfully made. You ought to be able to say I am a, a child of the most high. You ought to be able to tell somebody I I am a born again Christian. Yes. 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 Amen. Here today. Amen. Paul remembered Philemon with joy. Amen. How do your pastor gonna remember you? Amen. Paul remembered Philemon with joy. Yes. Paul was away during a third missionary journey. He was in a. Can you imagine your pastor being in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. And while he's in Atlanta, he's a long ways from the church. Mm -hmm. Long way from home. Amen. But pastor ought to feel uh, like Paul felt uh, that, 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 that there are some people praying for me. Amen. That, 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 that even though I'm not home, there are some people that, 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 that that's checking on me. Amen. Can you imagine being a pastor and you in Atlanta and you get a text message from a member that says, Pastor, I just had you in my thoughts. Amen. Pastor, I, I had you in my prayer. I wanted you to know everything here is okay so you and your family can just enjoy yourself. Amen. Pastor, we praying for you. Continue. Just rest. Enjoy your vacation. Amen. Can you imagine your pastor being in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. And he got members in the church that's calling him saying, Pastor, I'm going through, I need you to pray for me. Can you call me? Yeah. Pastor, this going on. Mm -hmm. Because some people is still walking around babes mm -hmm. in Christ. Yes. But every now and then, pastor needs some season things Amen. that will stand on the battlefield and pastor can call you and say, let me call Elder Wimbledon. Elder Wimbledon, go check on mother so-and-so. Go check on brother so-and-so. Because what Paul would realize is that I can't do this by myself. I need some Philemon's. Philemon says, for we have great joy and consolation of thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Amen. Y'all heard that? Yes. Philemon is encouraging Paul by telling him, listen, for we have great joy and constellation in thy love. Every now and then, you ought to encourage your pastor and let your pastor know, Pastor, I want to thank you for last week, Amen. last Thursday. Why? Amen. You prayed for me. I, I'm doing a lot better than but most people. Once you get what you get, you gone. Amen. People call pastor, pray for me, pastor, do this for me, pastor, do that for me. But once they get what they get, they gone. Amen. 
They don't even think back to even say. But Philemon remembered Paul. And he wrote to him, encouraged him. He said, because the bowels of thy saints are refreshed by thee, brother. He was letting him know that what you're doing, every now and then, I don't care who you are, you can be a mother. Here's some help in here today. But you need your children every now and then to just say, Mama, thank you for, for, for all you did for me. Amen. It's not that you're, you're doing it for them to say it, but every now and then, even a mother needs some encouragement. Even a father, every now and then, needs some encouragement. Amen. You need, you need your children to say, Daddy, I just want to say thank you. What, what did I do? Don't worry about it. You just been there for me. Maybe you didn't do anything spectacular, but just being there was enough. Amen. Your children every now and then need to be encouraged. Anytime you're a parent and you don't never stop to tell your child I love you, maybe give them a hug. I don't care if they ain't moved but from here to there. You ought to stop by and look them in the face every now and then and say I'm proud of you. For what you are coming and I'm knowing you're going to do greater things. I ain't got no help in here today. Parents today so caught up in your mess, <laughs> you ain't even got time to help nobody else. You, it's a sad day when you're a parent and your children got to always keep taking care of you. Some of y'all right now, your child uh, ain't no more than about 12 and you, the house in their name. Well, the electric bill is in their name. Uh -huh. You done messed up their, you done messed up your credit, now you're messing up their. You ought to be a parent, need to be encouraging your children. You you ought to be pushing your kids. That's right. In middle school, you going to college. You will be somebody. God has willfully and wonderfully made you. There's a future for you. And they shouldn't worry about well, mama and daddy, how am I gonna pay for it? Don't worry about that God will make a way somehow. You ought to tell your children every now and then that what you accomplished, if it's high school graduation, you ought to be there with something. Amen. Got a lot of parents. Uh, all we do a lot of time is lip service. You did a great job. Thank you. No, every now and then, won't you buy them a gift? Yeah. Amen. That's Here's another thing, parents. Your children need your support. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of our parents, we more, we support more of the opposite sex than we do our own kids. Amen. Some parents are burdens to their children. Amen. You don't supposed to be a burden to your child. You're supposed to be helping them, pushing them, helping them. And the most thing you're supposed to be doing is helping them in, in, in the church. Come on. Amen. Come on. How in the world are you going to church and realize you need God? Right. But leave them at help home like they don't need God. Amen. So when they get to be your age, who they gonna lead on? Right. Who they gonna depend on? Right. Who they gonna look for their strength and help? Right. Come on, tell it. Mm -hmm. Had a young man one day I was talking to. He told me, he said, look me in my face, but we got angry. Mm -hmm. He said, Pastor, I already told you, man, I'm not into the church thing. I'm done with that. Don't keep asking me about no church. Mm. I said, oh, okay. Mm. I had to take a step back. Mm. But I looked and I said to myself, see, you only are a product That's right. 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 of your environment. Uh -huh. I'm, 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 my faith is in God so strong. Mm -hmm. Not because when I was a child, I was running the streets. Right. When I was a child, I was doing everything I was big and bad enough to do. Amen. But while I was stupid, right. Mama, I ain't up here today. Uh, Come on, tell her. She lived the life in front of me. Yeah. I might have came home staggering and drunk, but when I opened the door, she was praying, Lord, touch my son. She was laying prosperous before the Lord. Tonight, yeah. two in the morning, three in the morning, I was woke up out of my sleep. Mama was walking around the room, speaking in tongues, yeah. laying her hands brother walking through the house waking up everybody telling God Lord you say that if I live right my children will be saved she put that in me and she told the Lord I want all my kids to be saved before I die before I leave this world all my children Thank you. Thank you, Mama. I didn't hear my mama praying, God, uh, uh, 
I need money. I didn't hear her praying, God, I need a man. I didn't hear her praying, God, I need you to do this, I do that. Her prayer was always fix to Jesus. Like you said you were. Her prayer was always leaning not to my own understanding. But in all my ways, I'm acknowledging you. Thank you. Sometimes as a child, it looked like my mom was crazy. Looked like she had flipped. Looked like she had lost her mind. When my friends came over the house, she would be giving God glory. And as a child, I was embarrassed because my mom was praising God. I was embarrassed because my mom was lifting up her hand. But when I was a child, I acted as a child. I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I realized what mama used to do. Now I'm doing it. I realized mama was not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel was brought her to life. It was the gospel that brought her peace. It was the gospel that gave her joy. It was the gospel that gave her hope. My mama taught me to lead not. My mom was Philemon to me. Thank you, mom. Yes, sir. She encouraged me. Yes. 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 Thank when my you. sister died, mm. when my sister passed away, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it's like mm. to have lost a child. Mm. But I watched my mother. Mm -hmm. She was feeling mom to us. Mm -hmm. yes. After she had wept, mm -hmm. got it all out her system. The next day she got up and she called, she said, Johnny, mm -hmm. come on, meet us. We gotta go get the arrangements. Mm -hmm. We gotta go get things taken care of. Mm -hmm. She knew that crying time was over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. But she had to encourage her children mm -hmm. because she realized if I fall through now, y'all gonna fall through. Mm -hmm. So she was the anchor mm -hmm. yes. in the family. Yeah. Yeah. But see, she forgot to understand something. We won't go follow my mom because she was mama. Nice. People sometimes want, want you to follow mm -hmm. want you to follow them because of their title. Mm -hmm. You got to live something. Right. See, we follow mama because mama taught us and showed us that she loved God. Amen. She let us know that, that, that this joy that we weep today is we, we have tears of joy. Mm -hmm. yes. Mama looked at us and said things that were strange. That's right. yeah. She said, uh, we are not weak as if we have no hope. Yes. Right. Mama knew that she had two sons, both pastors. Mm -hmm. yes. Her daughter at the time just lost her best friend, which was her sister. Mm -hmm. Mama just lost her daughter. Mm -hmm. But she knew that all eyes was on us. She knew true heart gonna be watching my son. She knew living waters gonna be watching my other son. And she realized when she brought us together, she said, now is the time that we got to understand that God is our strength in the time of trouble. My mother was my Philemon. She encouraged me. Amen. Maybe not by writing me letters, but she called me on the phone. Yes. She didn't know how to text yes. because text was not in her era. Amen. But she knew how to pick up the phone. Amen. She knew how to encourage me. And every now and then when my brother last year lost his wife, yes. mom, Philemon, called me. Amen. She said, Johnny, I need you to get up because it was late. She said, your brother's wife has passed away. Amen. She said, we got to go to your brother's house. Amen. And so I went and got dressed and my, my oldest son was standing there. Mm -hmm. I called on the phone, Lexus and Josh and Jay, Drill was at the house and I said, grandma called and said, we need to pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it don't look good for Teresa. Amen. She just had been sick. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I called my son. He was in the street. He hadn't got home quite yet. Mm -hmm. I said, Jay, where you at? He said, I'm on my way home. I said, they told me for us to start praying because it don't look good for Teresa. Mm -hmm. He said, Dad, I'll be there in a few minutes. He walked in the house. By the time he got there, 
I was upstairs looking down at him when he came in the door. I said, she gone. Mm -hmm. I looked at my son, he began to cry. Amen. I said, Jay, we got to go to, to Uncle Stacy's house. We got to go over and be with the family. Amen. My son looked at me, he said, Dad, I already prayed. Mm -hmm. And God already showed me yes. that he had already called her. Yeah. But my son looked at me, he said something. He said, Dad, mm -hmm. I'm with you wherever you need. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this to y'all today as I preach this lesson? Because I don't care who you are, you need some Philemon's in your yeah. life. Yeah. Thank God for my mom being a fellow mom in my life. Yes. But I also thank God for my son yes. being a fellow mom in my life. Amen. I thank God for my wife yes. being a fellow mom in my life. Amen. Because she sees the trouble. She sees the disappointment. She sees the hurt. And she sees all the things that I leave the church and I go home and she's with me when she see that John, I know, cause she can see what I see. Amen. Yes. She see that the members didn't show up and I know it hurts you. Amen. She see that the members ain't supporting you and I know it hurts you. Amen. Because when you're called to do something and God called you to do it and the folk don't stand with you, I don't care who you are, it hurts you. Yes. But I thank God today. Yes. With these tears in my eyes, that I thank him that he gave me a Philemon. He gave me a wife that was that I can lean on her breast. I can lay on her shoulder. She can tell me, John, let's go out to dinner. And guess what she'll tell me? It's gonna be alright. Amen. 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 These are the people that are the wind. Beneath my wing. Yes. But I feel sometimes like I'm going down. Mm -hmm. It's this wind that whoosh. Mm -hmm. Sister June. You are a Philemon. Amen. In my life. Amen. You're a wind beneath my wings. Amen. But I feel all hope is gone. You are Philemon. Amen. God is showing you in your life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's your children. Amen. Sometimes it's your wife. Amen. If you're lucky, sometimes you got a mother that's still living. Amen. And every now and then, you expect those people to be Philemon. Amen. But ain't it wonderful when you got an outsider like Sister June? Amen. Sister June been with me for 16 years. Amen. I've challenged her on every level. Amen. Mm. That if anybody should have left this church, not the ones that left, but if anybody had a right to leave, it should have been Sister June. Amen. Because there were times when I said things, I fussed at her, when she stood there and took it on the chin. Amen. But she said something to me one day to let me know that God is on my side. Amen. She said, Pastor, God sent me to you. That's right. And she said, my, my own father, mm -hmm. my mother, Amen. my children told me, you ought to leave that church. Amen. You ought to leave, Pastor. Amen. But she said she told them, she said, I can't leave because I'm on an assignment. Amen. Amen. She said, God told me, she said, I'm going to leave when God tell me it's my time to go. Amen. Many have came Amen. and said, I love you, Pastor. Amen. Many have stood on pastor's anniversary, right. dropped stuff in a basket, yeah. gave me a name, pastor you this, pastor you that, pastor right. you this. Ain't it funny how easy it is for people to love you, right. but they'll turn on you just like that. Amen. Right. Amen. But when you really know folk love you, right. it's when folk will stand through right. you through thick and thin. Amen. Everybody needs a Philemon Amen. in your life. Amen. Amen. Paul, as I get ready to close, he said in this letter, mm -hmm. he said, I thank you, my brother, mm -hmm. for encouraging me. Mm -hmm. Paul was saying when I was shipwrecked mm -hmm. on a lonely island, mm -hmm. Philemon encouraged me. Amen. He said when I was out here doing the work of the Lord and I didn't have money mm -hmm. to eat, Probably to find an inn, a place to live. 
Yeah. Every now and then, Philemon would send money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Paul wanted us to understand something. I'm going to take my seat. Paul wanted us to understand that he had been to Ephesians. He had been to, he had been to Ephesus. Mm -hmm. He had been to Rome. Mm -hmm. He had been to Corinth. Mm -hmm. Paul is letting us know he had traveled on many missionary journeys and he had went to places like Rome, yeah. Corinth. Mm -hmm. These were metropolitan areas. Yes. It's like he was saying, I've been to Washington, D.C. Yeah. I went to Philadelphia. Amen. I've been to New York. Amen. And I've been to Atlanta. Amen. But Philemon was not a metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. Philemon was a little building like a little storefront mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. Philemon didn't have many members. Mm -hmm. Philemon didn't have a big congregation. Mm -hmm. Philemon didn't have a big church. Mm -hmm. But the ones that Paul thought mm -hmm. Amen. would be the one that would help him. Yeah. When he got down on his luck, yeah. it was Philemon who wrote. It was Philemon who sent money. It was Philemon. Paul wanted the world to know that sometimes it's the ones you think won't. That's right. Sometimes the people that that we see every day try to beat this message. Sometimes it's the folk that you look at every day, those are the ones that take your crap. Those are the ones you beat up on. Those are the ones that got to take all of the, the your stress, your anger. Amen. But those are the ones that love you. Amen. Not the ones that always stand around, give me, give me, give me, give me. Amen. Not the ones that praise your name, but go on on home. And then when times get strong, they roll on you. Amen. You need some Philemons in your life. Amen. You better go home and thank God for your husband. Amen. You better go home and thank God for your wife. Amen. You better thank God for your sisters and your brothers. You better thank God for your children. Because sometimes your family look crazy and strange. But I want to let you know today that when times get rough, your family will be there. When everybody else leaves, they'll be there. They might not always understand you. They might not always be with you. But when you get there, trouble. I can promise you it's your family and your friends that will stand by you to the He's our Philemon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He prays for us each and every day on his knees, interceding for all of the church members. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank God for him. Praise God. And we thank God for all the Philemons that are in our lives. Amen. Our children, our parents, our friends, co-workers. Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to open up the doors of the church. Is there anyone that needs a church home? Praise God. Now is the time to come forth. Mm -hmm. Give God your, your heart and give, hallelujah, the pastor your hand. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, will there be one? Praise God. 